Hey everyone, it's Johnny from WP Johnny. Welcome to my Gutenberg tutorial series. I don't know if this is video number five or six or something like that. I'm going to show you how to use Gutenberg to replace your traditional page builders. So by traditional page builders, I'm talking about Beaver Builder, Divi, Elementor, WB Bakery, um, all that. You can use, uh, there's two ways to go about it. One is you can use a Gutenberg page builder, so to speak, like a more full on, uh, full featured Gutenberg block library. The other option is to use a starter theme, uh, to use your themes starter site that already has everything laid out nicely in Gutenberg. So let's take a look at the theme option first because that's the easiest to get going. For example, from the Generate Press site library, you have different options, right? So you can pick designs that are using Elementor. You can pick designs that are using Beaver Builder. You can also pick designs that are using Standard. So that means using Gutenberg. So these designs here, uh, don't require any page builder at all. They're super lightweight, super lean, and still have like a pretty nice styling. Yeah, and still has that like page builder-ish kind of look. So I'm gonna use the Nev theme actually. Oh, sorry, uh, here. So right now I had Cadence enabled. I'm just gonna switch it to Nev. And here we go, let's just activate this. And then once I have it activated, I really like this theme by the way. It's a, it's a high quality, very high quality. I'm going to go to the starter site and it says I need to activate this to enable the starter site. And then boom, I've activated whatever plugin they wanted. And then from here, you see I can choose all the different layouts and then picking which uh, page builder they were built with. I want the Gutenberg ones. And I actually really like the default one. I like this one a lot. So I'm going to hit this, hit the import. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. Go ahead. Let it happen and it imports all this and I'm gonna view the website on the front end and actually here let me clean up because this isn't a very good let me just clean up the extra the extra contact oh web agency GB menu huh? oh okay okay I see what's going on let's switch this to main menu and there we are yeah, I've, I'm sorry, this is my testing website and I have a billion things going on. So there you go, this is what it looks like on the front end. So this looks like a page builder, but believe it or not, it's actually Gutenberg. I'm just gonna go to edit, and once I try to edit the page, you'll see for yourself, you see the back end, um, it's all Gutenberg. So there are people that are saying that are, Gutenberg can't do front side editing, I don't know what they're talking about. Clearly, they haven't tried it, they haven't kept up with it. So I can go in here, edit text, edit images. I can click on things and just switch things out. You see, so there you go. And I can switch things out and I can do whatever I want. I can even add more blocks. I can change, you know, for example, this uh, button color over here, see? So all that's doable, it's very easy to do. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go the other route, which is using a Gutenberg uh, page builder route. So I'm gonna switch the theme again to something that's uh, not styled at all. Okay, and I'm gonna use, uh, how about Cadence? Where is it? Cadence, where are you? Actually, you know what, why not use Bloxy? I, I've actually really liked Bloxy lately. And here you are, here you go. Let's just look at the front end and boom. Okay, it's like a total mess because it's mixing the page builder layout with, with the Bloxy default theme. So what we need here is to install one of the full featured page builder libraries like Kubely, uh, Stackable, Kyok and Blocks. Sorry, full featured Gutenberg block builder libraries, block libraries. So I'm gonna put Stackable and I have the pro version of Stackable installed on here. Let me just make sure that it is enabled. As you can see, I have a million a million things going on. Okay, cool. I have the premium enabled and that is awesome. Yeah. All right. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to go to page. Okay. And I'm going to call this stackable stackable and I'm just going to hit publish. And here, okay. I've got so many block libraries installed, but the one we want here is this one. Uh, you see this S, that's the icon for stackable. I can also, you know what, let me get rid of this uh, annoying, let me get rid of the one that I'm, the ones I'm not using. Actually, I don't want the otter blocks, uh, where is it? Okay, I don't need that. 
I don't need a... Uh, okay, yeah, that's the one that was annoying me. See, it's adding this because it's kind of like taking over your screen a little bit. I just want it blank and simple so you guys can see. And here you go. Uh, that's fine. It's just trying to tell you that things have been removed. Okay, so here you go. I'm going to use the block, the design library from Stackable. Let's open it up. And we've got like a huge mass of goodies. So I'm just going to go straight to the premium designs. Go to sexy stuff. And see, and I can use like these, uh, all these like different page builder layouts. So let's go to headers, right? And we can use like, let's say uh, that one. Let's just toss that one into there. Oh, cool, boxing, I love boxing. Okay, and then here, I'm gonna go to the design library again. And let's pick, a, how, about, how about pricing box? Yeah. Here you go, and then let's pick one that looks cool. Uh, let's pick that. Okay, I'm sure there's like a site library and all that you can choose from, but you know, from here you go. From here, we just edit it, and you can choose uh, how many blocks and how many columns, and changing the color and all that, editing all these things. There's even effects, so if you hover over it, it will lift, right? So there goes your animations right there. Um, can add extra spacing, can add less spacing. So you you decide. It's really easy to do. Um, it's ju it's just like your Elementor Beaver Builder and all that. And there are tons of really nice designs on there. Uh, when I went to the Stackable site, Stackable, I think it was WP Stackable. Let's see. Let's go there real quick. And ch -ch -ch -ch. Features, features, features. Where, where are your site demos? All right. Well, too bad. But they had some really nice, uh, some really nice site libraries on there for you to choose from and just mix and match. So that's how you use Gutenberg blocks like a page builder. Just make sure you install the a block library, like a comprehensive block library, and then you'll have those options. Um, for example, here I also have this. I think this is a different block library. I believe. I don't know which one this is, but let's go ahead and, oh, I got to pay for that. All right. Well, I didn't pay and I'm not going to use, oh, here you go. Right. So I could import something like this. That doesn't look that fancy, honestly. There you go. So there's so many third party plugins out there. You just mess around and you play with it and then you can have your, your design. And as you can see, I mixed, I mixed and match uh, blocks from different third party uh, block plugins and let's take a look at how it looks. So these are the ones from Stackable, and then these were the ones from whatever plugin that I had. And there you go, this is their layout, it had a different layout. So there's so much you can do, it's really flexible, it's really cool, very fun, and also very lightweight. Now, let's get to the next two things that people always ask um, about Gutenberg when they're trying to replace their page builder. The first one is, can you edit header and footer? And the answer is no, Gutenberg cannot, cannot edit your header and footer yet. It will soon be a native function in the WordPress core, and it's going to be called uh, full site editing. I've messed around with that feature in beta already, and it looks amazing. Another way to get around that is to use a theme that has a custom uh, header footer builder. So here, there's a reason why I enabled Bloxy. I go here because Bloxy has a really awesome um, custom header footer builder. And I'm going to go here and you see, so I can like move my logo to the top row, to the center. I can move, um, how about I move this menu to this row. I put logo here. Oh, come on. It's not sticking. There you go. I put the search on this side. Right. I'm going to close off this account thing. So you see, I can, I can play around and add things as I like, uh, how, wherever I want them to go. Right. I can add a social, social buttons up here. So it was really intuitive. You can use something like this to build your own custom header. And then same thing, you can go down here and build your footer very much the same way, right? Deciding like what widget areas you want, uh, what, where you want the copyright to go and all that. Um, I thought it was like, it was really incredible. And then see here, I can edit. So that's another way to do it. 
without having to load a bloated page builder. You use a theme with a custom header footer builder. Also, you could just hire a developer to custom code it yourself. You know, if you're using something like Uber menu or those crazy like full panel menus, just custom build it. It's gonna be so much faster. It might cost you 200 bucks or something like that, but it's so worth it. Now, archive templates, uh, basically uh, how to create custom category pages or archive pages. I've already showed you in the previous video where I, um, where you install these plugins and then you can turn any page into a custom archive page. Then the last part, people are asking, how do you do template parts like reusable blocks? So to do template parts or, or a variation of it in Gutenberg, you can just make reusable blocks. And I've already covered it in another tutorial video. But for example, I could like highlight, um, I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna click this. So I've got several highlighted, highlighted. And then I'm gonna try and right click. Nope, I can't right click. Uh, where is it, where is it? Uh, let me, all right, well, I, I couldn't find it, but there you go. And then there you go, add, add it to a group it or add it to reusable blocks, right? And there you go. Um, from now on, if I create a new page, yeah, leave that there. Uh oh, computer's running slow because of recording. I'll add a new block here and go to reusable and there it is. I think it was this one, untitled. So there you go. And boom, it pops back up and voila, very cool. Now the other thing, the other question that people ask me as well is does Gutenberg have global settings? So for example, so you don't have to keep setting your color palette and typography. And the answer is yes. So there are a few ways to get this done. Um, one is if you have a theme that has a, a, has a default color palette already, then you don't have to do it through Gutenberg. But the other way, if you wanna do it through Gutenberg anyway, you can go, for example, stackable. That's the one I'm using. See, so these are the theme colors, the default theme colors. I can go use only stackable colors, right? And I set this, and I set that, and I set that. And those are the dynamic colors. And then let's see, I'm gonna go down here and uh, where are the settings? Oh, I've already set this. So, oh yeah, you can set your typography as well, like a certain size, you know, you want all headings to be a certain size, certain letter spacing. And here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just mess with the letter spacing for heading two. And let's drop the size a little bit. See, there you go. There you go. That's the global. And then I'm just gonna close out this and then click on this block. And actually, there you have to do that. And I'm gonna edit this block. And I'm gonna go in here. And hey, all right. So anyway, my point is they do have global settings for color palette and typography. The last part that people want to do with Gutenberg is they want to have animations. So earlier you saw that I did some light animations um, using the Gutenberg block editor, but we can also, there is a few other ways to get all like the full featured animations that you typically see in page builders. I'm gonna save that for the last video. Thanks for watching and check me out on the next video.